Hello and welcome, good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever it is the time that you are when you're listening to this. Welcome once again to the Solano Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Walt Solano. And as you can see, if you're listening to me on YouTube, I changed a little bit the setup. By that I mean I'm just, well, recording in my living room instead of my room. <laughs> you know, make it a little bit better. And today, today I got a story for you from the Magical Travel Journal store that I am pretty proud of, to be honest. It's, um, I call it the saga of the Croatian sailor. This happened to me when I was working in, in, in Montenegro. To all of you uh, that don't know what Montenegro is, I'm gonna start with explaining to you. Montenegro is a country uh, located in the Balkans. It's one of the ex-Yugoslavian republics. Uh, I would call them like that, but um, used to be part of Serbia, now it's its own country, Montenegro, its capital, Podgorica. It's uh, home to half a million people, as far as I know, and it's also home to one of the best hostels in the world. One that I will give a shout out right now, it's called the Old Town Hostel in the city of Kotor, which it's coincidentally where our story starts. One of the best places to be. So. At some point in my life, I was working in the Old Town Hostel uh, in Kotor as, um, let's say, activity manager or something like that. Yeah, I was a volunteer, but at the same time I was paid, so I would say it was, it was a job. And I was very, very proud of, of my work, to be honest. I, I did a lot of activities, I always planned the parties, I was always doing uh, stuff with the, with the manager. Shout out to Danilo, Milos, Marco. Slavenko, all those beautiful, great guys, Ivana, poof, so many of you, so many of you guys. Um, point is that at some point I was working there for a while, and uh, Kotor, the, Kotor, the city, it's a bay, it's actually a very known cruise ship bay, and at some point uh, we had uh, some people, we're doing, you know, as hostels do, and we, we had a party. In this party there was uh, gorgeous uh, Swiss girl, which we're gonna call Gretel, because you know, I'm not using real names in this story, so Gretel, and well, you know, I was a guy in charge of drinks, alcohol, fun, so at some point, uh, I started talking to her, we started talking and everything. She was very surprised to see a Mexican in the Balkans, I'll be honest. I was very surprised to be a Mexican in the Balkans too. And at some point, you know, I started giving shots of rakia. She liked them, we liked each other. So we started making out a bit and we decided that it would be a nice idea to go walk and have a, you know, a midnight walk in the bay, which we did. And we started walking around, we saw the bay, and this is a very funny thing, because I wasn't really drunk and she wasn't drunk either, but you know when you meet a girl, and you both know what you want, but you need to tiptoe around and you don't really fucking say it? <laughs> well, it was something like that, and the magic of this is that also Kotor is a very beautiful bay. It's a city that used to be part of the Republic of Venezia in its time, like a long time ago, when Venezia used to be a city-state. So, it's a fortress city, but it's a very beautiful place. So you can see a little bit of Italian architecture as some as also Slavic, it's, it's beautiful. And at night, I, I cannot finish describing it. There's a couple mountains, there's a fortress, St. John's Fortress all the way on the top. It's just gorgeous. You can't, you can't, you can't really explain it, you can only experience it. So this is the part of the podcast what I will tell you please go to Montenegro please go to Qatar you're gonna enjoy it way too much it's actually not too expensive they use the euro so it's very easy to do like you know uh, the visa change and all of that currency is not that bad and food is amazing people are great and you're gonna have the time of your life if you stay in the old town hostel that's the most important part tell them Esteban sent you they're not gonna give you a discount but they'll be happy <laughs> anywho we started walking around and for some reason I thought it was a great idea to start singing in Spanish because 
I don't know. We all Mexicans believe that European girls are gonna like us more if we speak Spanish because for some reason we forget that Spain is just literally around the corner. I don't know. We think that you've never heard Spanish. We, I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't. No one really stops us from from thinking that. You actually like it. Come on. I mean, help me out here. You you actually like it when we speak a little bit of Spanish. It's it's a little different accent. You, you enjoy it. Anywho, I started singing some Mexican folk songs, some mariachi stuff, and it was very funny because we were passing through in the bay and there was a yacht where we could see four people outside and the moment I started singing they started singing a lot so two surprises here one that people know mariachi there two that they were speaking Spanish when I turned I started singing and they started asking us to come into the yacht so I was next to her and I, I looked at Greta and we were like you want to go in and she said yeah why not I'm like, I mean I'm already drinking, we're all having fun. And I was trying to impress her with the with the singing. I sing horribly. I have no idea why I thought that was a great idea. I to this day. Anywho, we went into the yacht and we started talking and it turns out that the people inside were Colombians. And they knew the songs and they had tequila. Now at this point um uh, in my life I've been living in Montenegro for four to five months. I haven't seen tequila in a while. So the moment they showed it to me, I was very excited. And I do mean extremely excited, like stupidly excited. <laughs> so the moment they gave it to me, I literally just grabbed it and drank it straight from the bottle. And, and they were laughing, they were clapping. The sweet Gretel was just losing her shit. She was amazed that this is actually what Mexicans do. I wanna point out, it sounds like a stereotype, but we do do it. We all know it, we wear the tequila bar, we do drink it directly. It, it, it's part of it. it I, I'm pretty sure it's in our constitution. If we don't do it, you lose your nationality or some shit. <laughs> Anywho, I started singing, they started talking, and I, you know, when I was in, uh, when we were in the yacht, I started asking like, oh, are you on holidays? Is your yacht? And it turned out that they were the crew of the yacht. The actual owner was staying in a hotel in Kotor. So they actually told me that uh, if we were gonna stay there, if we wanted to stay the night to like, you know, well, not really stay the night, but you know, party with them. But if we were going to do it, we couldn't take any pictures because the owner had let them have their party, you know, their stuff, but they were not allowed to really have people inside. Because the owner was gonna stay five days in Kotor and they were gonna stay five days in the yacht. I looked at Gretel, I said like, hey, uh, you know, this is what they're asking. Are you okay with it? And it was very funny because all our Latin instincts were to break this law of having people in by just not having evidence. And she was very surprised that I told her like, you know, we're just not gonna take pictures so they don't get in trouble. And she was like, why would they get in trouble? And when I explained all of this to her, she was very scared because she went like, I don't wanna have any trouble. I don't wanna break any laws. Are we okay? I'm like, it's okay, don't worry. As long as we don't say anything and we just stay here. So I love the fact that every time there's a little bit of a breaking in any rule, you know, people from Europe, they really get scared. <laughs> I'm not condoning, we shouldn't have done anything bad to break any rules, but you know, life is life. Anywho, we, set, we, we got into the boat and we started singing and they brought a guitar. Now, again, I don't play the guitar, I'm really bad at it. I know how to play like a couple of chords, you know, the traditional Mexican songs like uh, Cielito Lindo and stuff like that. But that's that, like that's that's the the amount of knowledge I have <laughs> of the guitar. Drug me thought it was a great idea to try and play it. And also the Colombians were pushing me. So I started playing and we started singing and every everything was going great with shots going around. At some point, you know, Greta was a little bit more touchy with me, me too. We started making out and at some point she said like, oh, you wanna go to the deck? And like a fucking moron, <laughs> I actually thought she just wanted to see the ocean. And I went like, why would we go to the deck? You can just turn and the, the ocean's here. And she's like, no, let's go to the deck. And we're like, but why? She actually had to go and turn like, cause I wanna fuck. I was like, oh, okay, okay. The, the, yeah, let, let's go. Ladies, if any of you are listening to me, I would like to tell you right now, uh, 
guys we're, we're not great with signals you, you you gotta you gotta tell us stuff especially when we've been drinking so she told me went into the deck and you know did her business you don't need to know more and at some point we came back to drink and this is when everything becomes a little fussy we went back, we started drinking, and at some point they brought another three bottles of tequila and rum, and I was just losing it. I just kept on drinking and drinking and drinking, to the point in which, you know, you just black out. It was the first time in my life I actually blacked out with alcohol. It was pretty funny. And <laughs> also, I don't recommend that. I don't condone it. Let me just say, if you are thinking about drinking to black out, uh, Solano says, no, don't do that. Be responsible. Anywho, I woke up next morning naked in the deck, uh, <laughs> wearing literally some kind of like lifeboat, the deflated lifeboat as a some kind of sheet. I don't know. But the funny part was that the boat was moving. I could feel it move a little bit. And I thought for a second, like, OK, it's just the waves, but it moved. You know, with the waves normally torn side, it, it really turns just side to side. This one was turning up and down, so I'm like, this is kind of weird. And um, I stood up. I also noticed that I was naked when I stood up, and I saw that the boat was moving, and we were in the middle of the ocean somewhere. So <laughs> I don't know why. I I I, I panicked. I, I woke up fast. I put on clothes. I told her like, wake up. She looked at me. She woke up. She went like, oh, we're moving. I'm like, yeah, put on. You know put on clothes or something and we went into the coat pit and the colombian guys were still partying there was like we're all having like mimosas and stuff so like, when i came in they were like hey you want champagne i'm like whoa 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 morning like what time is it They're like oh it's like 10 in the morning you want something They're like yeah um where are we I'm like oh you don't remember i'm like well no <laughs> what happened I'm like oh well you thought that it would be funny we went to the middle of the coast to like skinny dip so we went like yeah let's let's do that but you know you just got naked with red and you stayed in the deck you fell asleep so the thing is that before that we we're talking about croatia because that's where where we were coming from we we actually came from the port in Jurassic in some part in croatia i don't remember the city and they were coming from koto we were talking about it and you said you've never been so we told you like, well, would you like to go? And you said, yes. So we're driving, we're going to Croatia now. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, we're on our way to Croatia. Here's the thing. In a boat, it takes around three to four hours to get to Croatia. Because I also said a specific place called Var, which is like a kind of island, as far as I remember. And... I was not carrying my passport with me or any type of ID. I actually just had a phone and I didn't even have a wallet or money or anything. I was, wasn't carrying nothing. So we were just on a boat on our way to Croatia and, and like, a, like a stereotypical Mexican, I was literally going to enter illegally because I didn't have a passport. So I kind of got a little scared and I told her that, and also she got a little scared too because she didn't have her passport either. Everything was in her backpack back in the hostel. But she said like, you know, well, Croatia, it's a part of the European Union. I'll be okay. I was like, yeah, you'll be okay, but I won't. I'm going to get my Mexican has supported or some shit. And I started talking to Colombians like, what, what are we going to do? She's like, well, we're already on our way there. So there's not really like a turning back at this point. Which I found kind of funny when they said that because we could have turned back. We had the fuel, we had everything. They just, I'm guessing they were just laughing their fucking asses off on that. At that point, I got a call from my manager, Danilo. And, and I answered, I remember going like, Hey, uh, I'll be back a little later today. I am on my way to Croatia. And he actually answered, what? And I explained to him all of this, started fucking laughing and went like, Well, you know, good luck, brother. And then he just hanged up. Like, okay, that's fucking great, I guess. So I, I put on my clothes back. I had the mimosa. I went, like, at this point, what am I going to do? I had some breakfast with them. And when we arrived at VAR, I <laughs> thought, like, well, we're fucked. And 
I went downstairs because they, they had to, you know, stamp the passports and stuff. And I went down with Gretel and at some point we even made up a story. I was like, can I say, I'm, I don't know, I'm going to be your husband or something. And just help me out. What am I going to do? But she went like, no, no, no. We'll just tell the truth. You'll be fine. I'm like, yes. again, maybe you will. I'm not European. I'm going to get, this is like five to 10 for me or some shit. So I got there. And the immigration officer was looking at me and I tried for a moment, I said like, might as well just lie. But I didn't, it's, it was a little late already. So I just told him like, look, officer, sorry. And I explained the whole story, but the thing is that, you know, a normal human being would have just said, I forgot my passport in the hostel. I literally explained from the moment I met Gretel, I, I even explained him that, I, that we made out in the hostel, that I was trying to impress her, that I sang, that I don't know how to play the guitar. I, I told him everything, every single detail. And the agents found it so hilarious and they were just laughing their asses off that they took pictures with me to begin with. They were like, come here, we, we are the first Mexican illegal immigrant to come here and they were laughing and they were going like oh it's like in the states and then you know making some jokes and i was just going like okay i'll uh, you know it's it's fair i i did came in without a passport <laughs> and they told us like look this is what's gonna happen we're gonna let you stay in bar in the port you can come out you can go travel but we're gonna need you to leave before you know end of the day because like that then you didn't really legally stay in croatia you were just here as an as a stop so we're just gonna let you come out into the port check the beach and then come back so that's what we did we stayed in croatia we stayed in the beach we had a little bit of picnic we kept on drinking Gretel was laughing i was a little scared i called my 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 boss again danilo i told him everything i told him i'll be back later he started laughing <laughs> And we actually did. Around 7 in the afternoon, we went back into the yard. At that point, light was still there. Um, you know, we caught all the time zones and everything. We went back. And I even was asking them, like, hey, uh, are you not going to get in trouble for, for taking the yard and all that stuff? And they just started laughing. They were like, no, our boss don't care. <laughs> what? And like, yeah, our boss doesn't, doesn't matter. As long as we don't bring people in, he doesn't care. We're allowed to use the yard. He actually is supposed to stay for a while there, so... No problem. <laughs> so yeah, that was, I was basically one of the first times I ever went to a country without a passport. Now again, I'm not condoning that kind of behavior. You're not supposed to do that. But this is the kind of part that I find very funny because it's an opportunity that, that I didn't plan. And that's like the beauty that I found also in traveling, that you don't really plan for stuff. It just happens. And you got two choices. You either, you nut up or shut up, like they say in that movie. You, you either do it or you don't. And at that point, what was I supposed to do? I was drunk, man. I, I was trying to impress a girl. And, I mean, men will do the dumbest shit to impress a woman. And that's true. I mean, you can, you can, and then that ain't even like a thing. We all know it. We, we all know we're going to do something dumb just to impress y'all. And, and I mean, crossing to another country without a passport, that's pretty fucking dumb. <laughs> Nevertheless, I got to see that part of Croatia. It was beautiful. I also would like to tell everyone, go to Croatia. There's so many beautiful stuff. Also in Bar, there's a, a couple of hostels from the... There's, a, there's a, a whole network in the Balkans called the I Travel Balkans Network. And with this, you are always, you, you're gonna check all the types of hostels that are, well, first of all, safe, second of all, cheap, nice, funny, you know, they got everything. So you should go check them out. It's, it's not about, I'll, I'll link a description in my, in my Instagram for all of y'all to check. Uh, again, if you're, if you're planning on traveling to, to the Balkans, it's it's a must, you know. If you, st if you you even might start in Croatia and then from then on go to all the other countries, as is you know Serbia, Bosnia, Montenegro, and you know I hope this story made you want to check out the Bay of Kotor, so you can go and check out that bay. And again, bring your passport. That would be my advice. Bring bring your passport, and you know go go slow in the Rakia. It's uh, it'll make you take some very bad decisions. <laughs> as I did so 
you know, just enjoy it. Thank you again for listening to one of my multiple stories. I really hope you, you had fun. I really hope you, you laughed a bit. I hope I made you smile, made your day a little bit better. So please do share this with your friends, uh, share it with your family. Um, I'm trying to get this podcast a little bit off the air. So help me out with that. I'll be more than happy to, to also hear from all of you. If you would like to give me some feedback, send me some emails, send me some stuff. All the context is down in the anchor. So whenever you, whenever you want to, please do send us some stuff. And again, if you like the podcast, subscribe, recommend me to your friends. If you don't like the podcast, then don't subscribe, but then recommend me to your enemies. Make them feel bad. <laughs> Thank you again. Be safe. Stay inside. Wear your masks. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Do stay safe.